Welcome back again, everyone. Today, what I wanted to take a look at was disassembling the disc brakes on this rear donor rear axle that I got out of the 1968 Mustang. Now, what I'm planning to reuse, I'm probably gonna reuse the discs, probably gonna reuse the calipers here. I am not going to use the actual axle itself on the inside here, but I'm gonna to wanna to pull that out so I can get the third member, which we'll take a look at later, and pull that out and put that into the car that I have. Now, some of the tools I'm gonna to use here today, I've got a 9 16 socket to take off some of the bolts here. I've got a, oh, what I'm gonna use is an Allen replacement here, it's a T56 torque, torque, red, or torque socket to take off these Allen wrenches. Again, not the preferred or the recommended way to take those out. Ideally, I'd have a set of the Allen um, sockets within my toolbox, but I don't actually have those yet. So something to get here in the future, but to make do, I'm gonna go ahead and use this uh, T56 Torx N. And then the other piece I'd also recommend, so for the brake lines that we're gonna remove here later, ideally you'd use one of these line wrenches like this. So you can see it has an extra little round, extra line to get a good grip on those lines. Now these tend to strip, or the thread or the top end here tends to strip off pretty easily, especially if they're old and rusty. So these make that a lot safer to do. Now again, what's unfortunate, I have a set of metric uh, line wrenches, but I don't actually have a set of standard size. So I'm gonna end up using the 3 8 inch box end wrench to take these off here today. Now, I want to, since I wanna save and I wanna put all this back on the car, I'm gonna to try to keep everything in order as close as I can as I take it apart. And then I'll lay out everything down here so I can kind of put the pieces back together when we're all said and done. Now, let's go ahead and get started. One thing you want to watch out for as you're taking apart anything that becomes a brake line, first and foremost, if you touch brakes at all, make sure you know what you're doing. You're, you're talking about the safety and your ability to stop your vehicle. So make sure you understand what you're doing or you have a professional standing over your shoulder so they uh, can double check your work. The other thing I wanted to mention here is the brake fluid that'll come out of these lines is corrosive to most paint, most plastics. So if you're doing this on your car and you have a finish or anything else you care about, be careful of what this drips on. I'm fortunate here, this has already been off a car, so the lines are pretty dry. I still expect some fluid to come out, but just, just to flag or forewarn yourself there, if you're going to be leaking any of this fluid on anything you care about, make sure you douse that in water and get it cleaned up as fast as you can. Now to speed the removal here, I've also got myself an impact wrench with a 3 8 drive on the end to loosen up these bolts a lot more quickly. One thing we can take a look at as we take the caliper off here, we can take a look at where our brake pads are to see if that's something we should replace here, either now or in the near future. These look like they have a decent amount of pad left on them from the surface here, this metal plate to the end here. This is all the friction material that actually breaks or stops your car. And you can see on both ends, it's still got a decent amount of room to wear there. They also have, and not all different brake pads have them set up in different ways, but this one in particular has this wear marker here. So if you hear your car start screeching, like it sounds like metal on metal contact, typically it's these little wear markers to let you know that it's time to change your brakes. Now the rotor here itself, it looks like it's got a little bit of bluing. It may have been uh, gotten a little hot. Somebody might have been stopping kind of quickly, 
I don't see any deep grooves. I don't see any, uh, what looks like any chattering or warping on the outside here. So we'll probably go ahead and clean this up and reuse it, but we'll take a closer look here in the future. Now we're down here to the bracket. I'm going to go ahead and remove these pieces again, trying to put them back together or at least set them in a way that I can reassemble it back together later. Now next what we need to do is we want this last plate off here. In order to take this off, we're going to have to pull the axle out the side. And to do that, we're going to have to rotate over. I don't know if you'll be able to see this here. There's a hole that we have to be able to hit each one of these four bolts holding the axle shaft into the axle housing. have it. That's the axle shaft there coming out of the axle housing. You can see we have a pressed on bearing on the end here, which we'll check out. Since we're not reusing these axles, we'll check this out on my car to make sure that these rear bearings look good. Otherwise, we can have new ones pushed on instead. And as I mentioned there, since I want to make sure I get everything back together in the same way as it came out, I'm going to go ahead and put those bolts back into these same holes once again. All right, that does it for this side. I'm gonna go ahead and finish up the next side and then we'll try to attack the center differential here. 